Hi, this is Melissa. Welcome to Messy Missy Creates. Um, I am going to at least start a card with you. I am using this. It's the Through Spellbinders. It's the APG Die of the Month. Um, APG is Amazing Paper Grace Die of the Month. Um, it was for April of 2022, of uh, this year. It is the pop-up pop up 3D vignette watering can boutique. It is, let's see if you can see this. It will look like this. Let's see, can you see? It is a, just what it says, it's a 3D watering can, and then it has all these flowers. Now, I've been using these flowers for other projects because I just am in love with them. They are, um, remind me of flowers I have in my garden. So, I, for this, <laughs> in the spirit of trying to make shorter videos, um, and through the, let's see, power of video, um, the... Let's see, I'm going to cut off camera. Um, but the instructions are on the back and they also put out videos on how to assemble these so you're not alone when you are when you buy these and get them home. I It says to cut out five of the body of the watering can, which is this. And then it gives you instructions on what to trim for two of them and what to trim for the remaining three. Then it says to cut out a handle, a spout, and the, what do they call that? The sprinkle layer, uh, it, the spout for the, it has the little, like on a watering can, where the water comes out, it has the little holes, um, so you can add some, you know, shading to that or whatever. So anyway, I'm going to do that now, out of this gray paper, just a medium gray. Ready, set. Ta-da! Look how easy that was. Um, it actually didn't take me long. Um, I do not have a camera set up where my die cut machine is. So, and I'm not even going to think about trying to do that on camera just yet. But I have already put together the outer layer. So that was one of the five. Um, the spout, the watering can, the handle, and then I did this little, oh, what did I call that a second ago? The sprinkler um, detail on the watering can. I hope you can see that. Um, I do want to add some shading, so I'm not going to glue that down. Now, I could have just done that out of darker gray paper, but I didn't want to just get out another sheet of paper. So, But I did assemble that. Very easy. I cut the little these little tabs off these little tabs right here i cut those off and then just glued the spout and the handle reminds me of i'm a little teacup you know here's my handle here's my spout anyway okay that was a little elementary school flashback there so what we're left with is four other bodies um, to the watering can and then we have these little side pieces which is this die right here. It is, oh, what do they call it? The 3D vignette side piece. That's what makes the, the 3D part. These are so cool. If you've never seen them, they really are just, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. And uh, don't let me be your only source for seeing these because they have some amazing crafters that put these things together just beautifully and in way less than an hour. So, um, I have these, you know, this is my little magnet, you know, what I showed you in a video, a couple videos back. So, I kept having to flip over and all the dies would fall off um, because the instructions are on the back. So, now they don't fall off. Okay, it says on two, trim the side tabs for the front and the back. Well, I already have one. So, I already did the one, you know, that I put together for the front. So, I only need one more that have the, right, trim the side tabs. So, that's these. 
and it gives you the little um, picture, you know, of what it's supposed to look like so that you know you're trimming the right pieces. Um, well, you know, I have not quite adjusted to having to have readers, um, your reading glasses, and I forget to put them on, and then I am just baffled as to why I can't see. Let's see. Clean up my little mess as I go. Okay, so I have these little side trims, or the side tabs trimmed off. So this is going to go, this will be our back, and this will be our front. So I'm going to set those aside. And then on the remaining three, glasses back on. This is little teeny tiny print, if you can see that. It says on the remaining three, trim small bumps above tabs for the inner layers. Now, I had to really look hard to figure out which small bumps they were talking about. The only thing I can think of, trim small bumps above tabs. So it's gotta be these right here. Because these are gonna be your inner layers and these tabs are gonna fold in. So I guess those bumps would be in the way. So I'm gonna actually fold that tab in just so I can get to those bumps a little bit better and trim those off. Um, you know, I could save myself a step here and cut right over my little, well, I can't hit my garbage can for trying here. Okay, save myself a step and cut right into the can. So I'm just gonna do that for all three of these. So like I said, they really do walk you through what you're doing. Um, and then if you still aren't understanding how it goes together, um, Spellbinders at the beginning of each month when they put out their relate, uh-oh. Okay, I cut the tab, so I'm gonna have to redo that one. Um, but at the beginning of each month or, you know, when they're putting out the club kit for the month, uh, which is what this was, um, they do a very quick, um, very short condensed, like six, seven minutes, um, on how to assemble these. So I hate that I have to recut that one, but I don't think I can fix that because I cut that tab. Even though I folded it under, I still cut it off. Okay. But in the meantime, um, what else? Okay, the handle, the spout, the sprinkler. We already assembled the first one. So I have the 3D sides. Um, I put one of these together, not this one, but I have another set that I put together. It's a stove. I made it, I don't know, last month maybe. I didn't video it, but um, I need to post it. I haven't posted it on my Instagram yet, so I'll do that soon. And you can see it. They're really cute. They're, they stand up, but yet they fold to put into a envelope. Okay. Um, I have not cut all the flowers yet. I have three already cut. But let's see. The assembly says to slide flowers through the watering can opening in the front. I don't have the flowers yet. So I guess this is a build it as you go. So you have the back piece, which I had put over here. And then it actually doesn't tell you. Now I just said how good they are at um, giving you instructions. I think I have missed how you attach the little vignette piece. This is all about the flowers. Um, as you build each layer, put them on top of one another to help determine placement of the flowers. So they're at various heights and placement. Oh, fold 3D vignette pieces on perforations and use adhesive, a red line adhesive, which is score tape. Um, you know, the little thin double sided tape. Um, adhesive to the folded tabs, attach one side of vignette piece to back layer. Sorry, I think that was my ice machine if you just heard that. Yep, that was it. <laughs> um, attach one side of vignette piece to back layer of watering can, 
place in three interior watering can layers into slots, repeat with other side. Okay, so basically it's telling you to set attach at the preparations. I'm gonna do it in like this. So at these little preparations, this is the little piece that's gonna get attached. Um, I'm wondering if this is supposed to go, cause this has some embossing on the front side. Oh, it shows it, okay. Yeah, shows it right here. So you attach it to the front, just like this. So let's do that. Um, going to use this art glitter glue. Now it's basically, sounds like it's telling you to do this one at a time, like one side at a time. Let's see if this matters. Um, sometimes these little pieces are shaped differently, so you know to add it up or down. Um, this one appears to be the same. So let's see if we can tell where they glued it before my glue dries. Um, okay, looks like it starts, as long as it finishes here, I think we're okay. So let's do that. If my glue hasn't dried already. Okay, and it is pretty crucial that you get, if you want it to open right and line up right when it's all together, it's pretty crucial that you get that fold right on the edge, right there. Okay, so that's one side. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one on. I don't know if it really wants us to, but while I have it here and I have my glue open, I'm gonna do it. I can always, if it's in the way, I can always, um, you know, fold it out. Let's see if I can do this this way. And let's see. One of the hard things I have to do with my hand is like negotiating something in between my fingers. I know that's the, let's see, still that, those fine motor skills I'm still working to improve but they certainly are a whole lot better than they used to be. Okay, so I hope I had that in frame. Now I have these reverse tweezers. If you don't have those, those are amazing to help glue little bits and pieces down. But, okay, so these are our flaps, our side pieces. So when it stands, um, the, that's what these little tabs are for that now I have to go back and, because I cut that one, they're going to fold into here. Um, they slide, not fold, sorry, slide in and then they notch down. So they lock into place and then you obviously wanna glue them together too. Um, they are gonna, oh, actually, they're gonna stick out the sides. You, you might not glue them. Let's see. See if I can attach one and show you. And then I'm gonna have to pause and go cut some flowers. Okay, see the, the side here? And then you just kind of slide it down so that it locks in. It's pretty secure. And then once you get it in both sides, um, Actually, you know what? I know that it says to build the flowers as you're going, but um, I can, since I'm not gluing these, I can, I can always take them back off if I have to. Okay, so that's in. Um, yeah, I definitely can see how it might be harder to glue the flowers on, but the idea is that you, you glue some flowers, you put them Let's see, see my little bits and pieces envelope. This is the envelope that I store the dies in, the actual die set. And then I had already put together three flowers. I don't know if I'm gonna use these colors, but 
the ones I already have. And so you slide them in through the watering can opening. So I guess we'd actually be gluing them to the back. So if you, it says to do eight flowers or it says with their project, they did eight flowers. So each layer, I don't think I wanna put any in the back though. Um, because then it would stick out. This is not gonna be on a card base. This is actually gonna be the card. Um, if you put them in the this back layer, can you see? If you slide them through the little opening here, then you're gonna see the stem out of the back side, unless you put another backing on there, which I might. But I think I'm just, we have three layers, so I think this will be good. And then it talks about having like, on your backmost layer, was that proper English? Um, on your back layer, your first layer that you're doing, you want them a little higher so that as you're adding layers, you can put them in different positions like this. So if I add, oh, that's the one without the tab. So I'm gonna just slide this in. I may make this harder for myself later, but um, I also can use like a um, glue dots or something um, that will make it easier to glue the, the flowers in. I can put it down this row and then, you know, on the bottom of the stem and then put them in. Um, so you don't have to sit there and hold wet glue. Um, but I thought... Anyway, you get the idea. I might not connect that one. If you only connect one side, well, that one came out anyway. So that actually looks better. If you connect one side, then it still gives you the opportunity to glue, you know, to glue them in place as you go. So that might be what I do. I have to decide also which, what flowers and finish cutting my flowers. So I thought I would get that far and then I will um, do some video magic again and I have to cut another piece since I cut that off. Um, actually, you know, I could use that as the back, cut both tabs off and glue that to the back and not waste it. But really liking the white with the yellow in it. I mean, I want more color and more whatever, but I actually was thinking about cutting some of these flowers out of some pattern paper if I can find something with a small print. So let me um, do some video magic. I can't snap my fingers. And I will be right back. Okay, I cut, let's see, I cut another one of these um, and successfully cut the little bumps off without cutting the, tab, the little tabs accidentally. I pulled out, um, you know how I told you I store extra pieces that I cut in these little bags where, the, where I store the dies? Um, I pulled out some of those and I'm gonna assemble a flower with you. Let's see, I can move this, but let me just, okay, so these are the leaves. This is the leaf die. It cuts out two, one big one, one small one. I'm not sure if I cut out enough of them, but that's something that I'm gonna add later. These are the flowers. This is the, let's see, the bigger. You can layer these, like all three. Like this one, I layered all three pieces. Or you can do just two, like this. And I, I actually like this better. Um, I had just, you know, played around with them for a while and you know, just figured out what I liked better. I'm sometimes I get hung up on trying to make them realistic. Um, I like that smaller piece with that. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put this up. This is the stem, just so that you see that it cuts this piece out right here. Okay, so I can put this away. <coughs> Excuse me. And put these up here. Let's see. Okay, the stem is a little, little fiddly. Um, 
And I think I actually cut these backwards. The paper, I hate it when I do that. I actually sprung for textured paper so that I'd have a texture on it and I cut them out of the wrong side. Anyway, ah, blah, blah, no big deal. Okay, so you could like cut this up the middle and use them as two, but because these are not glued to anything, the idea is that you, let's see, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a perforation line right here. The idea is that you fold on that line. Once you get it going, it, it goes pretty well. Okay, one, you know, you see what I'm, you see where I'm going with that. And then you just run a little bit of glue down it and glue it together. It makes it sturdier because this is, remember, it's not attached to anything. It's actually, see how sturdy that makes it as opposed to if you just, you know, because it doubled up the paper. So you just run a little bit of glue. I'll do it real quick. Um, I've got to go somewhere in just a few minutes. So I want to make sure I get one flower put together with you. So I just do a little bit of glue. I do about an inch at a time. Otherwise, you know, all I got was glue all over my hands and only part of it was glued together. So just do a little bit. And this is also where, if you don't have any of these, I already said that, I actually have two pair only because I misplaced one of them and you know you know how that goes the second you i don't really need them for that though the second you buy another pair you'll find them right so i'm hoping you can see this so i just ran some glue in there not my glue over and if you get it, if you get the glue, that art glitter glue and some of the other ones, they're clear, they dry clear, and they dry pretty quick. And it's things like this where that, you know, fast drying ability comes in handy because otherwise you'd have to be holding this for a while. Now, let's see if I can do this without, um, also, these acrylic blocks make good um, weights for holding something down just to give it a little extra time to dry and a little extra pressure. Okay, so I haven't fully decided what colors I want, but I think I do want, aha, there it is. I do want this peach because I don't have one of those yet. So basically you just layer them and then you have, you have this. Now you can, I have not done this yet with these. You can ink, ink these and things how, let's see. Well, I know I had one that said peach, but this one is coral reef and it actually looks like a closer match. Um, I don't have a, finger dauber for all of these. So I'm gonna see if I can do this with this little blending brush. See how this works. I'm actually gonna do it on this part right here because that's actually gonna get covered up. So, you know, if you wanna take the time to do that to all of the flowers, you certainly can. Um, there's another way to do this. You, you lose a little bit of control over your, you know, amounts and colors, but I don't know, just playing. So um, I'm actually making this card for somebody. I don't wanna say who it is yet until after they get it. Um, but anyway, these little acrylic blocks are great for all kinds of little, little jobs. Um, I probably will, um, do some shading to the leaves. I don't know yet, we'll see. But, okay, so this is the front side of this. You can see it because it's indented. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. So, 
and I hold it with my little, re the reverse tweezers, if you don't know, you don't have to squeeze them to hold, you squeeze it to release. That's, I guess, why the reverse tweezers. So I'm just putting just a very small amount of glue and then just gonna line it up with the little cone end or the, that would be the center of the flower. I actually like that, just a hint of shading. I don't even know if you can see it on the screen, but I certainly can. And I'm thinking because I had that, well, actually no. I had the little finger dauber with the yellow on it. I'm gonna try this marigold. Let's see what that looks like. See how that comes out. It just gives a little bit of depth to it. Certainly not necessary. Now I have to remember I have ink on my on my acrylic. Oh, my stem stuck to my acrylic. Okay. So now I'm just going to glue this down. And there is a definite right um, up and down, back, front, right way, right way, wrong way. Um, you can see all the little embossing features when you cut them out. Um, even if you can't see them on the camera, I can't tell what, what shows up and what doesn't. Okay, so... I think I kind of like that with the peach. I think that's the first one I've done with the peach. Okay, see, now I can go back and add some of that yellow if I, the marigold color, if I want to. Okay, so I like it. Now, for the stem, I don't always go ahead and attach these, but um, I just attach them like that. Uh, if you want to angle them um, you can but I mean like a cone flower would probably grow like that I actually might do that with this one just because it looks fun um, doesn't give me as much space to glue hmm do I like that or not can I hide that green I guess I could hide it on that stem right there okay so I need glue on like this amount And that art glitter glue, you don't need much, that's for sure. Okay. Gonna use that. And, I don't know. That might be angled too much for my liking, but, yeah, maybe so. I wonder if I can, yep, look. Oh, darn it, okay. I guess I better leave it. It's not horrible, it's not what I want, but anyway, I just wanted to do that with you on camera before I um, had to go, but I will be back to finish. Bye. I thought I would um, leave this part in and just show you how easy it is to um, use this scrap box that I have put together that I showed you in a previous video. Um, it really just makes this process um, more enjoyable and much easier. and. Um, definitely keeps down some of the clutter that uh, we have as crafters that usually clogs up our desk and really puts a variety of colors right at my fingertips. I've got a bunch of um, my flowers cut out and put together. I glued my stems, have those cut out. I think I have everything cut out now. I am just going to finish attaching my flowers with you if that's okay. May or may not speed this part up too, but just trying some different things so I'll keep talking just in case I don't speed it up um let's see what did I do with that sorry for the reach um I actually started using this glue run or tape runner to do some of it I hesitate using tape runner sometimes because I hear from other crafters and I know from experience doing other types of crafts let's see let me make sure I'm doing the right ones here. Um, that, you know, I live in Florida. It's extremely humid. And 
it is, let's see, maybe I can angle them. I can angle them just a hair and still catch most of that. Yeah. Um, that in the humidity, the some of the tape runners and glues, um, I used to have an Etsy, Etsy shop and I made jewelry and a variety of paper crafts. And, but I made my boxes for my jewelry to go into when I shipped. Um, I made my own tags, boxes, packaging, things like that. And it was always an issue. I never could find a glue or anything that would hold. And so, you know, that was discouraging. So this, you know, since then I've found art glitter glue. So far it's sticking. I haven't exactly like stuck it out in the weather or anything like that, but it, it doesn't matter what you keep your AC on here. It is, um, it's humid. Humid in your house, humid in pretty much everything. Let's see, what if I just attach it I mean, you have your stem showing through your flowers in real life. So, let me see if I just put some glue right here. Um, anyway, I, uh, maybe that'll work. Um, which one did I just do? Oops. Ooh, boy, I really bent those. Um, that was fun digging through my little paper scrap box um, because I have colors in there that I don't have full sheets of paper for. So that was fun. I uh, wish I had thought of that to begin with. And it's so much easier because you can, you know, you don't have to, um, well, I don't have to cut down my paper anyway. With my machine, I have a big die cut machine, so I don't have to cut down um, I can run, I have the Spellbinders Platinum, the larger one, it runs a full sheet of paper through it, so I don't have to cut them down anyway, um, unless it's a 12 by 12, but um, anyway, I just thought I would, let's see, oops, good job, I'm um, trying to keep up with what colors I have, anyway, there was just a lot of variety of of papers and it was so easy just to grab a little square and throw a little die on it and run it through. Let's see. I have a couple of them angled. Let's see if I can angle this one a hair. And I think I was just trying to angle them too much before maybe. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I am a little leery of using that because I am sending it to someone who is in like humid weather. <laughs> so, you know, that would be, that would be a problem. I don't want them to fall off before they get there and, you know, not after either. Um, I am sorry if you can keep hearing my ice machine. It normally is not that loud. Um, it actually kept us up last night. Um, my husband had dumped it yesterday or right before I was doing the first part of this video. And, oops, um, he had dumped it. And I guess because it's empty, it's just louder when the ice falls. Um, okay, I have one. I'm down to my last stem, so I need to pick my flowers um, accordingly. Um, oops, they're stuck to my... Okay, let's see what we have. And I think I decided not to use this darkest purple. I've got, I had three shades of purple. And I, I don't think, because most of them, other than this hot pink, most of them are pastels. Oh, uh, I guess this one's dark too. But I wanted a couple of dark, but that one was, this was a really dark purple. Um, I also decided not to use these colors because I'm going to be doing some fall fall ones soon and like I said with these flower dyes you can do um, the first ones that I did were in the orange and yellow and whatever and though they were brighter colors it's still when I went to put the card together still looked like fall which I'm okay with except this is not a fall card 
Okay, let's see what colors I am lacking. I have one peach, one light pink, dark pink. Um, I have a couple of, I um, maybe not should have done this one. Um, this is a little bit different aqua or light turquoise than that one. This is my yellows. This is a peach, peachy color. Purple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have plenty. So, and I have this one, and I have this. So, I think I'm going to start assembling the, um, I'll put this one to the side, because I think I have plenty of that color. Hmm. If I added anything, it might be another purple. Um, or this one. This is like a cream colored maybe that one. I don't know. I have lots to choose from, but guess what? I'll use them and see all the extras I have. Some of them are put together. Some of them are just pieces and they'll go in my little pouch. And then the next time I go to make a quick card, I don't have to drag out everything every time. So I do need to find my leaves. Ready to assemble. I just have these stuck in here. I have the three inside pieces or the inside uh, flaps I have them just attached at one side so I can flatten them over um I was kind of just doing some arranging so that I didn't have to fiddle so much on camera but here's what I figured out so let me take uh, this is why you practice right let me take these out um one thing you do have to remember is if you want to send it uh, or give it or whatever, it needs to fit in an envelope. So um, you have to also account for the dimension, um, the you know the thickness. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna just kind of use that as my guide. I was trying to figure out how tall I wanted these back flowers, and so this is an A7. Um, let me try that again. I think it's A7. It's a five by seven envelope, or envelope for a five by seven card. This, if I need it, I just got these. This is an A9, which is bigger than a five by seven. <laughs> I don't know, it's like eight and a half. If you were to fold a sheet of paper over, like a whole sheet of paper, kind of like we use for journals, you know, when you fold one over, what is that, five and a half or Five and a half by eight or eight and a half. I don't know. Anyway, it, it would fit a folded sheet of regular size paper. So um, if I have to use that one, I will. But I'm going to use this one as my guide as far as, you know, where to, where my max height of my flowers. Then if for some reason when I actually have it all assembled, if it doesn't fit in this one, I can use that. The only color I have in this is craft, and that's not really what I wanted to use for this one. But, you know. You know, you know. Um, so I'm thinking that this is going to be about as tall as they can be. What you think? I don't know if you can actually see the where the envelope stops. It's right here. So, yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. Knocked one of my flowers off the paper. Um, okay, so I'm going to start there. So that's going to be my kind of line. I want to see if I can take this out. Maybe if I set it there, I can still use that line as a guide just until I can get these two glued down. And then I'm not going to be worried about it. Um, let's see, how do I do this without losing my, losing my place here? Let me see if I can make a mark. Put that back in. Okay, so much for making this shorter. I'm so glad I practiced, right? No, I'm glad I thought about it because there was another card I made recently. And you know, these are just newbie mistakes, right? I'm still very new at this. Not new at die cut. I have been die cutting for a while, as you already know that. But I'm I'm pretty new at this 
it's one thing to die cut and assemble and whatever. It is a whole other beast trying to put it together and make it look like a card. Um, okay, so I have the little marks on there. So hopefully I can pull this out and maybe keep it here just as a reminder not to go, you know, stay in my, in my envelope lane here. Um, oh, <laughs> real quick. Don't you hate it when you do this? Do you know how many of these little replacement, well, actually, this is my second replacement nozzle, but these little pins that go in your art glitter glue, um, I need to, I don't know if Brooke's still at Recreations by Brooke. I've heard some of y'all talk about the, I think it's her, that makes the, the really fun pins that go in the thing, but, you know, when you try to put it in there and then it bends, if you force it, so, I have this little nozzle, it's not, or the little silicone topper. It's not going to work. I've already tried that, but it'll work for today. So, let me see if I can... See, I'm still following the instructions over here. And attach one side. Let's see. Slide flowers through the watering can, opening on the front layer and three interior layers. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how, oh, so I guess I'm supposed to save some for, yes, I am. I'm supposed to save some to go in here. So, uh, going on the eight flower theory, I'm trying to figure out how many, I guess that, well, actually that works because that would be two per layer. That works perfectly because I was struggling. One of the, one of my layers was going to have three, I think, and I was struggling with that. So, okay, I can see my little line. Now, let's see which is the best way to do this. Gluing it, then sliding it through, which really just seems like that's going to be a mess but we're going with it. So I'm going to put this one to this side. Okay. That one came out, so I'm just going to do that. It'll be easier. And then that really looked like that was a longer way. I was thinking they were going to be higher than that. Um, I could have actually cut down some of these stems in half and used them on another card. Um, let's see, there's my line. And alrighty, that's about where I want it. Okay, so I can move that envelope because now I know where my layers are. Um, Let's see, there's my acrylic block. And then, so pulling them out of here definitely, definitely was easier. Okay, so I can keep the acrylic block on here and then I can kind of position them using that as my guide. So what colors do we want next? Um, how about, that one and that one. And then maybe this one and this one. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Let me do this darker one in the back. And then we'll do these two on the next layer and then maybe these two on the front layer. Okay. Um, I actually need one that is kind of more in the middle. And then that one is tilted to that side. Hmm. Um, thinking out loud, sorry. You know, I'm overthinking this out loud. That's what I'm doing. I am definitely overthinking this. This is not rocket science. Not rocket science at all. Oh, I gotta remember not to go 
too much past that that one either. Okay, I know I want this one. I think I want this one in the middle. Yep. Um, right about here. I'm just going to use my thumbnail to crease or to make my mark on that one. And um, maybe I will speed this part up too. I don't know. I just thought I would kind of tell you that initial process and uh, I don't I know that real-time videos are longer obviously um, but I like them sometimes because sometimes when you're trying to follow along or to catch all of the details all of the instructions sometimes I get lost I mean I will get um, I'll get some of the instructions, but not all of them. And I don't know. Sometimes for me, it's just easier to have something in real time. So I guess just because they're angled this way, it doesn't mean they have to go on that side. They can go in this side, right? Is that, I think that was, that was hanging me up here. I just need to make sure I have the two that I want on the front. Let's see, on the front layer. Which ones do I want on the front layer? I think I want the pink and the white with the yellow. So I'm gonna put maybe the peach back here, right there. I'll put it, uh, how about right there? Um, anyway, I just do better with full length videos or, well, also too, when I'm crafting along, even if I'm not doing the same craft, I like the, a little bit longer video, um, because then I'm not having to stop and start a video every five minutes. Um, if I have a craft that's going to take me or I have an hour to do something and I just want to listen and glance up every once in a while, you know. Um, I like having a longer video, but sometimes when you're just trying to learn something, you don't want, you know, you just need the, the details. So that you can definitely get from Spellbinders has great videos like that, but it also, um, sometimes I miss some of the steps when they edit so much that they cut out you know, some of the, so many of the instructions, I tend to miss, um, miss some of the steps. So, let's see, we're gonna do that one there, and let's do this one back here. I think I'm going a little lower each time. I don't know how that's gonna look on the front. Um, I guess they don't have to. You just need to stagger them. Well, it definitely looks like a watering can full of, full of flowers. Yeah, I guess you don't necessarily have to stagger them totally. Um, yeah, I think I'm not. Let's see. Let's pick this up and see what it's going to look like standing. Of course, you're probably not going to be able to see that, but I can. So even if this layer is sort of the same height, I don't, I don't want them like, by the time I get to the front layer, they're gonna be down in the watering can. Um, okay, why are y'all stuck together? But I think just staggering the position is good enough. Okay, so I definitely know I want this one here, even if it's taller. Because remember, we still have to go back and add leaves. So, yep, like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have to stagger the height as much as just the position. I think that'll work. All right, I'm gonna move these now. And I would have probably been better off just doing them randomly. 
um, I probably wouldn't have gotten so stuck in my head over it. But, I, hey, that's what I do best. Um, I'm doing better with it. Um, I used to get so stuck on the slightest little details that it just kept me from doing anything. So I have, I've gotten a little bit better. I'm, I'm definitely known in my family and friend, my inner circle as somebody who struggles with making a basic decision. So that's that. What do they call that? Paralysis by analysis. Okay, so I have this one. And then, which one did I say I was going to put here? I don't know if I did, actually. Um, I think I want that one in the front. It's funny how the, the simplest one, the white with the little yellow... Um, I think that has ended up being one of my favorites. Okay, I'm going to stick him up here a little bit higher, but just towards that middle. Okay, I see my, see my line. But also, too, watching someone else do it in real time. Um... And, and also, too, if they're honest about their mistakes, you know, then you learn, sometimes you learn so much more from watching someone put it together and then, you know, because you don't know what issues you're going to run into until you actually do it. So I'd rather see somebody do it and fumble with it a little bit. Okay, that one might actually be hiding that blue one back there, but it's stuck now, so it's in there. Um... Let's see. But, you know, it, it's like the first time I put one of these together and I wasn't thinking about having to have, you know, well, I wasn't even thinking about having to put it in an envelope. So, okay, and just like this, they definitely, there is a reason that they tell you to put them together before you assemble the, the vignette part. Okay, so on this front layer, and this one clearly has to be the front layer because it has the handle and spout. These three right here, when you put them together, if you change your mind and you want to put them like this, um, you know, you can move these around. That is not a problem. Um, and I have definitely hid some of them, but I'm, I'm not going to. Okay. But this front one has to be the front. So I am, if I can get these together and keep them together, I think I definitely want that one lower. And um, what do we think? I think I lost this peach one back here. But maybe that blue one a little bit. Um... Might actually flip flop these two. I am not a flower arranger. Um, I'm sure there's a technical term for that. Um, I, I'm not. <laughs> I do not do that for a living. I grow flowers. Okay, I am actually, since I'm going to do these so short, I'm going to cut these off here. And then I can use those stems. They're not very long, but I could use those for another project, I think. Okay, now I'm dropping stuff. Okay. And I probably could have gotten away, just so that you know, I probably could have gotten away with six flowers. At first, I was thinking that the... that the eight wasn't, wasn't gonna be enough. Did I do that again? I sure did. I tell you what I'm actually gonna do. This might solve my problem. I'm gonna assemble this part before I glue in my front flowers. 
Now see, if you end up doing anything like this, you'll know. You'll know because she's, you know, you're gonna be like, oh, boy, she really fumbled with that and that really made that easier when she just put the inner layers together first. Um, when you're watching a, you know, condensed video, um, where they edit out all of their fumbling, you don't get to learn from those, those things. See, but this is where I could flip-flop that if I want to. And I think I want to. Um, okay, so funny story. Um, if you've seen any of my last couple videos, you know that I'm, um, I, I have a hard time, a minute, minute of story time while I'm fumbling. Um, I have a hard time still saying I have a disability, but I guess, in fact, I do. Um, and, and only because I didn't, like, want to own it permanently, and I still don't, but it's been around for almost a year, so it's a little more permanent than I initially had planned. So, anyway, along with that, um, it does come with its um, comic or, or, you know, blooper funny moments. Um, one of my one of my issues is okay. So around my house, I use a, wa a rollator, a walker that has the wheels and then the the seat. Um, you know, so I use that for like a little rolling desktop too. Um, like sometimes when I'm watching videos, I can put my little iPad or laptop or whatever on it. And um, anyway, so I had, while I was doing these videos, you know, all the little ink cubes I was using in the first part. Um, I had those stacked on my walker on the seat. And so <laughs> um, my house is old. It was built like in the thirties or whatever. Anyway. It, it is unlevel in some spots, and my walker rolls away from me at times if I do not put the brakes on and I let go. So it has left me in a little bit of a conundrum um, a couple of times. And, you know, a little scary first couple of times because I'm like, okay, now how do I get, now how do I get it? It's out of my reach. So anyway, all that is to say a few minutes ago, um, somewhere in between the last part that I filmed and this part, um, it got away from me and all of my ink cubes in the little, they were in the containers, they all rolled off because the walker rolled into the counter, uh, into the cabinets and when it bumped it, they all fell off. So now I have to figure out how, um, <laughs> A lot of the tops that had the color on them, a lot of the tops fell off of the actual ink pads. And I'm not real sure what, you know, a lot of the ink pads don't, when you look at the actual ink pad itself, you can't tell what color it is. I mean, if it's a lighter color, you can tell it's a shade of yellow or a shade of blue or whatever. But uh, yeah, so I'm not real sure how I'm gonna, I mean, I put, the closest lid to the ink pad on them um, for now, but I'm not sure I will ever know what exactly all those colors are. So that could make for some interesting crafting down the road. Um, and I'm sure at some point I might be upset about it, um, but you gotta laugh, right? Um, I, I think so. I think it's a requirement. Um, before I glue this on, I might need to cut out another one of these. This was not the thickest cardstock I had. I'm thinking I might need to cut out another handle and maybe another spout. And, well, look, see? I had that one I messed up before, and I could stiffen that up. Um, because in reality, when you open it up, 
it's going to stand up. I don't know if you can see that or not. You see the 3D effect? And then you, you glue this, these little tabs onto the back side, just like we did the front or the, that back panel. Uh-oh, and see, okay, I'm still learning. You know, when I arranged the flowers so that they would all fit in that envelope, I did them stacked together. When they go in the envelope, they're um, displaced a little bit. Like this. And I bet you 10 bucks I did not leave enough room on the sides for them to all go in an envelope. Oh no, that spout is not even gonna come close to fitting in that envelope. Okay, it wouldn't have even this way. All right, guys, well, it probably is not even going to fit in this one. Well, isn't that interesting? All right, now look at all of the mistakes I kept you from making. Hmm. Perhaps. Nope. Well, I will tell you this. I don't remember in all the videos I watched of these being put together. I do not remember them ever saying anything about... Oop, I'm sorry. What kind of envelope that you'd actually put these in. It does, however, give approximate finished project measurement. Hi, okay, one and a half. That must be the depth. Um, 6.1, or let's say 6.6 .6 and a quarter by 6.875 inches. So let's say almost seven by seven. Height will depend on flower placement. Okay, that I thought about. I'm not real sure that that can was ever gonna fit in an envelope. So I may have to figure out how to make an envelope for this card. Or just put it in a bubble mailer and be done with it. Okay, I'm gonna break here and I'm gonna go cut another one of these. And, uh, cause see, that was pretty flimsy. That was not my thickest cardstock. And, uh, but I'm pretty happy with the flower placement and then I have to put the leaves on. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, I have it assembled. Um, yeah, I uh, didn't drag you along cause I had to do some fancy footwork. Some of it wasn't because of the dye. It, it was, some of it was because I tore something and then realized that I probably should have used thicker cardstock to begin with. So I went back and I doubled. Um, I recut all of those pieces and just to firm them up, I firmed up some of the stems too. So like I said, that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have, you know, if I had used better cardstock to me or um, if you're gonna double it up, I would say do it before you die cut it because then I had, when I went back and I reinforced these sides, I had a hard time lining up all of those holes and getting those back in. But also because when I glued the front on to begin with, I glued it crooked. So I had to actually cut this side right here. And then I had to go back in and you actually would never know if I didn't tell you. But when I glued the, I didn't want to take the other side off. Um, so when I opened it like this, it leaned forward because I had glued this front piece on crooked. So you know, there's always a fix, right? So I glued another piece onto the back and I just dropped it down and just used a different shade, like a darker shade of gray. And it just looks like a shadow, um, but it keeps it standing right. Um, I just didn't wanna have to start all over. So anyway, I spared you all of that because it, it took some finagling, mainly because this top piece was already glued on. I had totally forgotten about the leaves. Well, not totally, but um, I guess it won't be too hard to do after the fact, huh? And we might not need as many, but I'm gonna put a few of them in here. If my, let's see, make sure my glue hasn't dried up. 
my um oops maybe a little too much might as well start at the front huh um my husband's in and out today so i'm uh kind of right here in the middle of the kitchen here so if um walks back through i might if i put this on fast forward you'll know why let's see i think i'm gonna tuck uh, let's see i do that one about that high. i don't know if you can see i can barely see mm, i might bring in those tweezers for this yep let's see where they go Looks like a good job for these tweezers. Just like, well, if I can get them in there. Okay, that'll work. I don't think I'm gonna quite get two on each, um, but I might here in the front just for, you know, cause those will be the main, main ones that you see. Um, might should have tucked that one. Oh, it did tuck. Very good. Very good, very good. Oh, let's see. I think I had mentioned this. Um, maybe I I had put it together and I didn't do it on camera because I really had to fiddle with it. Yeah, I think I already told you that. Um I um uh, that was a job, but that was because I did it not wrong, but made a couple of mistakes. But if I, uh, I thought about starting over, and I'm like, no, I made it work enough. Um, you know, handmade things don't have to be perfect, right? So just adding couple of leaves. I keep wanting to put them on upside. I keep wanting to put them on upside down. I don't know why. Um, still haven't figured out how I was going to mail this, although I did go back and read the package again, the instruction, and it does say something about um, a bubble envelope may be um, necessary or however they worded that. Uh, let's see. I might have to put the glue on here this time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get leaves on all of them. I might have to just be okay with that. I don't know that you're going to see all of them anyway. But I'm going to put as many on as I can. And I want to make sure not to go any further outside of this um, than I already am. So I'm going to start putting some like towards the inside. Um, like on this back one back here. That might actually be good enough. Um, let's see, I've got a couple in the middle that don't have any on them. I wonder if I can get them. I don't know if y'all can see or not. It always looks so dark um, on my screen when I'm recording, but then it's not always that dark once I actually look at the video, which I guess is better than the opposite, huh? Um, oh, let's see. It might be easier to go from the back. Yeah, I probably need one on that one. Maybe down here. Let's see where I can put this one. Um, might be my last big one that I have cut. I'm not going to cut anymore. I do know that. Let's see. Can we see? Yeah, if I could get the tweezers in there, that would help. I 
know if I can get my fingers in there. If you angle them up, you can get a little bit, a um, little bit of a bigger glue um, surface area to glue. Not much. It's cute though. It's, um, I could have done better, I think, and I probably would if I did it again. I just don't, um, I, I really need to get this one mailed. And, um, so I don't know that I really want to start over yet because I have two more cards I need to make. We have a lot of birthdays in our family and friends, um, in, uh, June and July. So I've still got two more birthday cards I need to make by the next week. So I uh, really need to probably get those started. And I'm thinking about, oh, I missed this one totally. Um, I'm thinking about maybe starting to journal again. I know that's how I started this channel. And uh, some of you are probably sitting there going, why are you fiddling with cards? Well, because I can. Um, you know, I had all these stamps and supplies and things, and then I didn't make cards, and I found I could use them in my journal, and that was nice. He gave me a, you know, another reason to use those supplies. Excuse me. And, uh, but then I think when I was down and, you know, physically down and I uh, couldn't, I just couldn't keep up with the journal at that point. And uh, I think I took up an interest in card making again, or, you know, I've always interested in it, but never really pursued it. And I don't know, then like right now it's, it's been, um, things that I can do that are small successes, you know, like um, short-term crafts or something, you know, whereas a journal is like a, a bigger commitment than a card, you know. Um, so I think it gave me, you know, a little boost of sense of accomplishment, I think. And, uh, ooh, that's my coffee pot going off. That's important stuff. And I bent this handle, and it really is making me sad because I know it's just a little detail, but... And I don't really want to try to have to... I had already doubled it up once. And I can't... Um, if I put another one on, I can't get up in this part. I could do it here, but not down here. So it this one just might have to have to be okay with a little bit of a, a bend in the, maybe I'll put a bow there or a flower or, well, has flowers in it. Maybe I'll put some kind of ribbon there. Um, I'm not much of a ribbon person anymore, but maybe I'll, I'll look for something to put there. But anyway, I'm basically done. And, um, I think the idea with these cards, I mean, you put them in the envelope like this and then they open them up and then they stand like that. Can you see down in there? And then they'll just sit, you can sit them on your shelf. So, um, you know, that's what it looks like from the front anyway. And on the back, I'll do like one solid, um, I'll do another one of these maybe in white or I'll just do a, uh, let's see, what would I do? Um, I don't have to do the whole thing. I could just do like a tag shaped or some square or circle anyway and put like a sentiment just like you would a card. And you can actually sign them on the back, you know, fill it out just like you would a card. But um, this one's going to get mailed with a, a letter. So um, I don't feel like I have to put a whole lot on the back, but I think it's kind of neat. Um, tell me what you think. And I'm going to see and try my best to condense this video down because it's in about 10 pieces and it'll take me a while. There was a lot of trial and error and babbling. 
Um, and the more the more you work this, the the better it's opening and closing. It just takes that paper a little bit to bend, especially after I doubled it. So, anyway, I'm gonna quit jabbering. Um, I am gonna think about um, a piece of ribbon right here. If I do get something on there, I'll put it in the final picture. But um, I think it turned out pretty cute. What do you think? Um, maybe chime in the comments. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing some kind of prompts or something for, for August. I was thinking about, I had been talking to Allison maybe about doing our own prompts. Um, I already have some ideas, so I don't know. Um, it might be a good intro back into journaling, or I might just do the some kind of journal without the daily commitment, just do it as I can. I don't know. Um, tell me what you're doing right now. Um, what are you doing crafty wise and journaling wise or I don't know what are what are you up to um but I'm gonna leave you here and uh, see if I can get this video down to a reasonable time frame and I will uh, bring you back for the next project alrighty bye <laughs>